Hi, and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. This video is for those of you who still think that the robotic enterprise framework is somewhat scary. It's not. Uh, if you've seen any of my previous videos, maybe you have an impression of, well, maybe I can manage this. But in this one, I'm going to show you how simple it is to actually get a project up and running in just a few minutes. And it's not going to be an enterprise level automation, I admit that. But we're going to use the framework. We're going to start from scratch. And in just a few minutes, I hope you will have learned something. And if you do learn something, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate that. But let's get to it. So the initialization state is where we load settings and applications for use later on in our automation. So let's open the state. And we can see that one of the first things that happen is that we run the init all settings file. The init all settings file reads the configuration file and creates a dictionary that we sort of carry around as a variable inside of the automation. So let's open the config file. It's located in the data folder over here. And it's simply an Excel sheet that we've seen in previous videos. And we're going to modify this a little bit, first of all, by setting the name of the orchestrator queue that we want to use. We're going to set that to orders. We don't have that queue yet, but we will in a few minutes. Also, we'll add the URL of a website. And this is a website that sells chili in all shapes and sizes and forms. Uh, I'm not endorsed by this website. It's just a good example for what we're trying to do. Also, I'm going to set a price limit. And we'll set that to 200. And we'll have a look at the settings in just a little bit. So I'll close my config file. And then the next thing that happens inside of the init state is that we run the kill all processes SAML file. So this is a file that will simply violently kill all of the processes of the applications that haven't been shut down gracefully in other places in our automation in case something goes wrong. So we go into the framework folder and we go to the kill all processes file. And the only thing we want to do in here is we want to add a kill process activity. And the process that we're trying to kill or wanting to kill is a Chrome browser. So we simply enter Chrome in quotes in the process name. And that means that any time this file is executed, all instances of the Chrome browser will be killed. So we'll save and close the kill all processes file. Then we will go get to the init all applications file. And this is actually where we sort of reverse the actions that we took in the kill all processes file in that we start the applications from fresh that we need to use during the automation. So if we open this workflow, we can see that it contains nothing. And what we want to add here is, because we killed the browser just a second ago, we want to start a new instance of a browser, and that needs to be of the type Chrome. And we can insert a URL here. And we could, of course, hard code that URL. But if we look at the arguments for this file, we can see that we get the configuration object in here as an argument. So we might as well make use of that. So we type in in underscore config. And then in parentheses and in quotes, we type in the website URL setting that we just created a few minutes ago, and we convert that to a string. So now we initialize a new browser and go to the website that is defined in the configuration file. We save that, and we close it again. So now if we go back to the main view here, what we've done is we've completed all the actions that we need in order to run the initialization state properly. The next thing that happens is that we want to get some transaction data to process. And that transaction data is going to come from a queue. And as I said earlier, we don't have a queue yet, but we'll build one now. So I'm in Orchestrator in my default folder. And we can see here that I have no queues. So I'll click the queues icon. And again, we can see here we don't have any queues. So I'll create a new one. I'll call it orders, as was defined in our config file. And we'll set the maximum number of retries to three. That means that if a transaction fails with a system exception, it will be retried three times. And we'll see that in just a few minutes. We'll click Add. And if we click over here and, and view the transactions of the queue, we can see that the queue is empty. There's no data in it. So I'll go back one step. And then I can click over here again, and I can upload some items into the queue. Now, the items that I'm uploading into the queue are simply a text file. And if we take a look at that text file, it simply contains a reference field, an order date, a customer, a product, and a quantity. And then it contains four rows of data that comply with these fields up here. So we'll just close that again. 
and browse our way to it, double click it, and we can see that in the order CSV file we found four rows, which makes sense, and we'll upload that into our queue. And if I now select view transactions, we can see that there are four new transactions. And if I view the details of one of them, I can see that uh, Steve wanted to uh, order a Chili Klaus Easter box. In fact, he wanted to order two of those. And that was on December 15th of last year. So we'll close. And now we just know that we have four transactions that we can process. We'll minimize this again. And now that we presumably have some data from the get transaction data state, we go to the process transaction state. And in the process transaction state, one of the first things we do is we invoke the process SAML file. If you remember, that file is located outside of the framework folder because that's where we sort of implement our business logic. So if we open that file, we can see that there's really nothing in it. There's some code in here that I've commented out and we'll get back to that in a minute. But for now, all we want to do is we just want to produce a message box. And if we look in the argument section here, we can see that we get two things into this file. We get the configuration object as always, and we also get our transaction item that we retrieved in the get transaction data state. So in this transaction item, there are some fields that we can look into. And we do that by typing, of course, the name of the variable in underscore transaction item, and then dot specific content, and then in parentheses and in quotes, we can simply type in product. And again, we'll convert that to a string just to be safe. And now for each item that we retrieve in the get transaction data state, we will process that item. And during the processing of that item, all we are going to do is we're going to show a message box. So if I save, go back to the overview and just run through it one more time. We start our automation and we go to the init state. In the init state, we load the settings from the configuration file and we kill all processes named Chrome. Then after that is done, we start a new Chrome browser, loading it to the web page that is in our configuration object. Then because we assume that is successful, we go to the get transaction data state. We get one queue item from our data queue. And if we look inside the state here, we can see that in the get transaction data SAML file, which is in our framework folder, the activity that gets the actual data is this one, get transaction item from a queue. And that uses the queue name that is also stored inside of our configuration file. So this is very flexible and you have to change very few things. In fact, you don't change anything in the get transaction data state at all in order to get up and running. You don't change anything in the process transaction state. You do change something in the process SAML file, but all we've done so far is we've simply added a message box activity to show us what product are we trying to process. So this is now a fully working automation. So if we run this, in a few seconds, we should see a, a message box listing the first product that we're trying to retrieve. First, of course, we load the web page and then we get the message box, Chili Klaus Classic. That's the first item in our data queue. We press OK, and that will prompt the next queue item to be processed. And that was the collector box. The next one was the Chili Klaus Easter box. And then the last one was the Reaper hot sauce. And now when I click OK, it should close down, well, it did, my browser, because that was defined in the close all applications SAML file. So now the application has run. And if we go back to our orchestrator, and refresh our data queue, we can see here that all of the transactions are new in here. But if I refresh this, we can see that they were successful. So because no exceptions were thrown inside of the process file, everything went as planned and was successful. So let's uh, take this one level deeper. And I'm going to delete the message box. And then I'm going to enable this activity right here. And this is what I call business process 2.0. Uh, this is a very, very simple process. And a lot of people will probably argue that it's uh, somewhat flawed. But uh, let me go through it real quickly. And then we'll try to run this and see how things go uh, once we introduce some errors to the automation. So the first thing we do inside of this business process 2.0 is we take that same product data that we got in our transaction item. We assign the value of that to a variable called product. 
And why would we do that? Well, I'll get back to that in a second. Then we are going to attach to the browser window that we opened just a minute ago in the init all applications file. And we do that because we want to navigate to a certain URL being the main page of Chile Klaus's website. We want to do that because we want to make sure that we can find a search box. And that search box, we're going to type the product into, followed by a press of the enter key. Then when we get to the search results page, we're going to click the Chili Klaus product. And this selector we have right here, we can see if I edit it, I've used the variable that we created with the product name in it. So this is a dynamic selector that will select whatever product we are currently trying to process. So I'll cancel back out of that. The next activity is that we're going to get the price from the product page, and we're going to assign that price to a variable of type double. So we'll convert the result of the get activity to a double. Then we are going to do a very simple if statement where we evaluate that price and we see if it's below the price limit that we set inside of the configuration file. If it's below the price limit, we're simply going to write a text file to the folder where we have our orders. This is where this business process really sucks because it's just going to give us a text file, but it serves as an example of how we work with the transaction item and the data that it contains. Now, if this if statement evaluates to false, then we're going to throw a business rule exception. And we do that by simply declaring a new business rule exception up here with some string formatting as the expression telling us that the price of a certain product was too high. So let's cancel back out of this and we'll save our process SAML file. And we'll go first of all to the queue. We'll go back to the main view of the queues where we can upload items into the queue. We'll browse to the same file that we had before, upload it, and just to be sure, we'll view the transactions. And we can see that we have four new transactions in here. Now, one final thing I want to do is in the debug tab up here, I want to set that we run this as a picture-in-picture -picture automation. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to run the automation, but we are going to change the configuration file up here so that the price limit is going to be 60 instead of 200. And that should cause some of the products to fail with a business rule exception. Then I'm going to save my configuration file again. And what I'm also going to do during the execution of this automation is that I'm going to cut my network connection by disabling the adapter. That should cause a system exception. So this little automation is going to be hit pretty hard and we'll see how it goes as we go. So let's try and start it up. And as soon as I start the process, I'm going to go to my picture and picture window. And we can see here that it starts up the browser. And if we follow along in the output window down here, we can see that it starts processing stuff. Now I'm going to be an idiot and then disable my network connection. Because that means that next time it tries to search for something, it's going to fail. So this is bad and this is what causes a system exception, of course. So I will enable my network connection again and minimize this window. And we can see that the automation picks back up, goes to the correct website, searches for the products. And while it processes the products, I'm just going to speed up the video a little bit so we can get done with it. And we're done. And if we go now to the orchestrator and refresh our window in here, we can see that the first transaction was successful. The second one was retried because of a, an application or system exception. So was the third one. The fourth one was successful because we got the network connection back. Then we retried transaction number two because that was now first in line and that was successful as well. Then we got to the third one and that failed because of a business rule exception. And if we look at the details for that, we can see that the reason is that the price of the Chili Klaus Easter box is too high according to the maximum price limit that we set in the configuration file. So this was a very quick tour around an example of actually using the robotic enterprise framework. I know there were parts that we went over very quickly. We haven't gone through the actual flow of everything that happens when you have exceptions and stuff like that. But if you watched the previous videos, you'll get a very good impression of what we actually did in this video. Now, the robotic enterprise framework is not a finished product as such. It's a template and you can expand on it and refine it. And you most often will when you're working with actual business processes. 
but I hope you got an impression of how to get started using it. So if you did and you liked it, give it a thumbs up, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe. Thanks. Bye.